Hello friends, it's your boy here, Jenkins Gaming, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the three worst heroes in Dota and doing a couple of honorable mentions for heroes that could be in this list, but they have their place in the meta. In any case, let's get into the list. Hero number three, Enchantress. This one is actually very near and dear to me because Enchantress is one of my favorite heroes. I am an offlane player and she has always been played as an offlaner, but also as a support. In fact, I would say that this is easily one of Enchantress's greatest strengths. It's the fact that she could be played as both a support and as an offlaner and do it very, very well. This is true for a lot of heroes. Versatility is typically considered to be one of the most appealing factors of any hero in Dota because it limits the enemy team's ability to counter that hero because they don't know what role it's going to be played in. A huge problem, however, is that in the reworks that occurred after Enchantress was being picked as an offlaner and winning as an offlaner, she lost the ability to support in the nerfs that were trying to nerf her offlaning. The main reason that she can't support now, or that she can support but do it very poorly, is that the level 1 duration on enchant does not overlap with the cooldown. In other words, if you get a creep at level 1 with enchant, it will eventually time out and die. That is a guarantee. This is a huge issue because the way that people would support with Enchantress is they would build an army of the good ganking creeps like Ursa's Centaurs and then use them to dive towers and that is straight up not possible now. You can't even build an army because you can only have one creep at a time and it doesn't overlap so you can't keep the same creep and keep ganking with it. You're basically at the mercy of RNGesus in the jungle. You're praying for really really good creeps and even then you cannot build an army. As for offlaning, she's not very strong right now either. I would argue that she's a stronger offlaner than support, but not for reasons that are related to Enchantress at all. It's more so related to how the offlane is played right now. I think basically the offlane meta is to pick some big, tanky, lane-dominating utility hero that will crush the lane, and then build Vlads and Crimson and just be immortal in fights. And my opinion on this style of Dota is simply that you could take any hero, do this, and probably have a decent chance at winning the game. Just because doing that is actually really, really good right now. It's kind of like in the 5 roll, everybody is buying tons of sentries and just dewarding the entire map. That is just straight up a really good way of playing Dota. It doesn't matter what hero you are. So, like I mentioned, I think Enchantress probably could do this, but only because any other hero could do it as well. The problem is... There are much better heroes to do that that will just have utility spells like Sven or Beastmaster that do very well with the utility items as well. Enchantress really isn't the greatest utility hero. On top of this, she has always had this issue that if she dies a couple of times, she'll fall off extremely heavily and be very useless if she's playing from behind. Um, it's just been made up for by the fact that she used to have an incredible early game on both support and offlane so you could take a lead and then maintain it but this is no longer the case because she can't play either of the roles well that she used to be played in hero number two life stealer donnie and i were recently streaming alchemy answers for our patreon boys the other day and we were asked about what heroes are the worst in dota which of course is the reason that i ended up making this video but donnie did a really great job at summing up the problems with life stealer in a nice little one-sentence nutshell, essentially, for every job that Lifestealer can do relatively well in Dota, there is a hero that can do it significantly better. In terms of carrying the game, Lifestealer is nowhere near the hyper-carry that the typical carries of these days are. For example, Slark, Terrorblade, and Phantom Assassin are so absurdly strong in the late game that you basically don't need any other damage sources on your team and they'll do enough damage for you. In fact, it certainly doesn't even help that for Lifestealer, these heroes that are popular are actually counters to him, so if that carries on the enemy team, not only will they do more damage than you, you won't be able to kill them. So it's just a problem with the meta as well. So if you go late game against these heroes, and even if you weren't countered by Slark, PA, and uh, Terrorblade, these three heroes would still out-damage you. In terms of being an early game fighting carry, uh, Lifestealer's Feast ability now does way less damage than it used to in the early game, but more in the late game, which is great for him. Uh, so naturally, he's a weaker laner in the early game. He's never been the greatest of laners other than against solo off laners, uh, and unless you're dealing with some like super high HP heroes. But even then, if you want an early game fighting hero who can also carry, Jug, Troll, and Phantom Assassin do way more in the early game, all without falling off or simply getting kited in the late game. 
If you want to go for the typical Radiance build, which has been the go-to build for Lifestealer for about a year now, uh, basically due to the whole kiting and carrying the game issue, then you're stuck in this trap of having to save up 3,800 gold in a very fast-paced meta, and you'll almost always get punished for that unless your opponents don't punish you for that, and then in that case, they probably don't have great heroes. Imagine trying to save up 3,800 gold versus a Beastmaster that runs out all of your towers with a very early Vlads. You're simply going to lose too much in this current meta that we're in by saving that amount of gold and not using it for something and fighting. But if you don't build into a Radiance, uh, you simply can't keep up with the farming pace of a Terror Blade, a Slark, or like a Battle Fury Phantom Assassin. And unfortunately, even though Battle Fury is currently a great item, Lifestealer simply does not benefit from buying this item like a PA does, because he needs items to not get kited, and he simply does not benefit from the cleave and raw damage like a PA does. That is, there really isn't a great farming item on Lifestealer that isn't otherwise game losing, so in most matches, he'll just fall behind. Unless he's running at people and killing them early, but if you're doing that, wouldn't you rather just have a Jug or a PA in your team doing that but better and then also carrying harder in the late game? Hero number one, Storm Spirit. The first thing that I want to point out is the fact that Storm has the absolute lowest win rate of any hero in Dota buff in the Immortal slash Divine bracket, sitting at about 41% win rate. The only heroes that could possibly be below him are the heroes that have not been played enough in the Immortal bracket to actually be ranked on Dota buff. Uh, and usually I don't pay too much mind to these win rates because, you know, Io has almost always been at the bottom of the win rate chart while also being considered the best hero in competitive Dota. But this is Storm we're talking about. This hero has almost always been a pub stomper. In fact, he's a specialty pub stomper, which makes him even better because he's like Meepo, but without the skill floor. In other words, it's never really been that hard to play a decent Storm, but good players can completely destroy with him. And yet... Here we are, with Storm Spirit being one of the lowest win rate and lowest pick rate heroes in Dota. Times have certainly changed, and the reason that I think times have changed is because of the changes to regen in Dota. Okay, so I want to do a bit of a demonstration that I think will shock a decent amount of people, because if you're like me and you're an offlane player, you haven't really seen Storm that much this patch, you're not really going to have a full grasp of how terrible he is until you go into a practice lobby and check this out or you try to play it in a pub. But in any case, uh, I'm in a demo lobby here. I have the mana regen covered by the mouse. That is, of course, intentional. I have a full inventory of basically the most expensive mana regen items in the game that realistically you could have on Storm Spirit. If you had to guess with this inventory and the mana regen talent and being level 25, how much mana regen would you say Storm has? So I asked this question to my girlfriend, who is an Immortal player, she plays Storm, she knows the hero, she knows the game, and she said 60. She said, okay, I, I know that it's lower in this patch, so I'm going to guess 60, and that's like on the low end. Uh, it's 37. <laughs> it, it's, it's very, very low for at this point in the game. I think with these items in the previous patch, you'd probably have at least 50 or 60 mana regen, if not higher, especially because you would have a Bloodstone as well. You'd have that the, the mana regen from that amplified. But the big issue is that the only item in Dota that gives you a percentage increase to your mana regen is Bloodstone. So that does give you a decent amount of mana regen. It's still not as much as it was before. And it means that you very literally have to buy a Bloodstone or else this hero is completely useless in the late game, even with the most expensive inventory. And the reason that he's completely useless in the late game, even with the most expensive inventory, is because Storm Spirit is a hero that has kill potential, his ganking potential, his uh, potential in carrying the game, his ability to clear creep waves, his ability to get across the map and get to fights and to be mobile in fights and to escape fights. All of these things are based completely on... On his mana regen. He's the one of the few heroes in Dota that has everything completely based on his mana regen. So a lot of these other int heroes, yes, they did get minorly nerfed by the change where intelligence no longer gives you percentage increase in your mana regen. Before that patch, you would get a percentage increase in your mana regen from items, and then int would give you a static amount. Now it is just the Bloodstone that gives you a percentage increase in your mana regen, which to other end heroes doesn't matter that much because they don't have as much of their game balanced around the mana regen, but Storm, it's basically his entire game, and as a result, when it's lower, he's going to be a trash hero.
So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Donnie and I are delving a little bit into the controversial Dota issues, like what heroes are bad, what items are bad, things like that. And it's a little bit of a touchy subject, so please let me know if you like this sort of content and, you know, we can keep doing it in the future or stop doing it if you want to see some of the old stuff instead. But in any case, there are two honorable mentions that I want to make at the end of this video for heroes that I was considering putting in the list, but I'm not 100% sure about it, or it's just some, like, specialty niche pick. And so that's Gyro, uh, the reason that Gyro isn't in this list, despite being one of the lowest winner at Heroes in Dota and being completely awful, is the fact that the Gyro IO combo is so strong and picked a lot in high tier games that I don't consider Gyro bad simply because that combo is so good. But if that combo was nerfed, it would definitely be a bad hero. Uh, and then Necrophos. The reason Necrophos isn't in this list is because he, he did get nerfed. He is a lot worse than he used to be. But for mid Necro, I think that the new build that you have to go is relatively. It was relatively fine to go for that, like the two points in the Heartstopper aura before in the mid lane, because you don't get punished for it. So I think there is a place for Necrophos, despite feeling like a very, very weak hero, in, especially in the side lanes uh, and getting nerfed so heavily. I still think there's a place for him. But in any case, thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and I hope to see you in another video.